So as the father of Doxus, tell us about what you see as the most significant things about Doxus 3.1 and how it differs from previous versions of Doxus. Sure, I'd be glad to. Um, and there's really, in fairness, a lot of us that did contribute to Doxus. We have uh, the luxury of having some really brilliant minds uh, all converging over cable apps and working on Doxus. And 3.1 is really the latest result of that collaboration between vendors and customers. With 3.1, we recognize that uh, as we expanded in spectrum for Doxus, yeah. be it with 3.0.3.1, we need a new silicon. So with going to new silicon at the CM and CMTS, we took the advantage of integrating in the latest and the, the greatest technology that was available, uh, which these days meant OFDM, which is a method of organizing the spectrum, uh, LDPC, which is a, a better forward error correction technique, and then we layered a whole bunch of other features in there, such as power saving features, um, expanded proactive network maintenance, so you can actually diagnose what's happening in the plant. We can actually generate waveforms at the head end and capture them with a cable modem and send it back, so spectrum analyzer type of techniques. So we've got a lot of things that, that fit into 3.1. Right. Well, you mentioned earlier in a panel we had about how 3.1 also shows, uh, makes a sea change for the cable industry from a hardware-centric focus to a software-centric focus? Yeah, so this is a subtlety that I think is a very important one. With, to date, the entire plan has been very stable. We've had QAM modulation, 256 QAM. It's always 256 QAM, it always works. There's always a fixed number of bits that go across the spectrum. Mm -hmm. As we move to OFDM, where we used to have uh, 32 carriers fit into a spectrum, we now have like 8,000, many, many smaller carriers. And we do that because we want to be able to adjust the modulation in each carrier and adjust the amplitude. So the way to really use OFDM well is to measure the performance of the plant. I should go to each cable modem and find out what performance it's seeing maybe bin the cable modems into several bins and then build a custom profile for each of those groups of cable modems. All this is a software-defined networking type of environment. So what happens is the whole plant goes from being a fixed operation to something that's very dynamic, very different from plant to plant and, and, and you know, changing over time. So it really becomes a software-driven plant. And you can imagine, like you could take OFDM and just wire it up at 1K QAM which is kind of the equivalent of the old 256 with the new forward error correction. It'll work great at 1K QAM as a fixed configuration to get to the 2K and 4K to sort of squeeze out that extra 10, 20, or 30% is when you start having a software-driven plant. Mm -hmm. So imagine investing in the, the software to get an extra 30% out of your plant rather than investing in, in having to rebuild parts of the plant. Right. So does that mean the Doxis is going to live forever now? Doxis, I think, will live for a very, very long time. We've got, uh, with Doxis now, a roadmap which we think is good for at least another 10 years. Uh, we've got new frequency limits set up to actually um, set goals for the RF guys to design into. We, we, we raised our upper limit to 1.2 gig and already equipment is starting to hit the marketplace that does 1.2 gig. Uh, we think that if the RF guys can go faster than 1.2 gig, or higher I should say, uh, that we'll be able to map Doxus into it. Certainly anything beyond a gig is only going to be OFDM, so that's pure Doxus territory. So, with our latest technology, and, the, and, and more importantly, the latest silicon, we have the ability to expand to full spectrum, uh, and it's the, the best technology out there, so it, it, it's very competitive. Okay.